There's a war underway right now. It's a revolutionary war. It calls itself ISIS. And here to talk with us today about ISIS and about other situations developing in today's world, Avi Lipkin. Avi, Good pleasure to, be back. to have you here. Always a pleasure to be with you. And I, I'm holding uh, uh, Avi's, uh, I believe this is your sixth book. My seventh book. Seventh book. Wow. Seven books. You're busy. It's called Islamic Rivalry. And the subtitle is ISIS and Iran are fighting for the heart of. Islamic identity. Now, that says one thing, but uh, there's another thing going on. There are terrorist attacks taking place in Europe, and as we make this, the most recent being an attack on Brussels, Belgium. The airport, I think the subway, not far from the European Parliament building. Uh, ISIS is, uh, is getting more confident, Avi, and what I'd like to do uh, today uh, is to have a conversation with you to clarify what in the world is going on and what do we as Americans need to do about this? Okay, well firstly, I think the greatest enemy of America, the American people, uh, of the Europeans, Jews, Christians, um, Hindus, Buddhists, the black people in Africa, uh, is ignorance. The greatest enemy is ignorance. People are ignorant of this system known as Islam. And there are many types of Islam. Uh, so for example, you have Shiite Islam, you have Sunni Islam. Uh, long history, I cover all of these subjects in seven books. I'm 67 years old, the teachings are there in the books. I connect the dots. A lot of people know, you know, pieces of the jigsaw puzzle, but they don't get the picture. Yes. Okay, what I wanted to emphasize uh, in this program because obviously, you know, I also have CDs and DVDs, 26 hours of teaching. We have one hour an hour, actually a little less. Um, what I wanted to focus on now is what I call the revolutionary Islam versus the evolutionary Islam. And most Americans uh, understand the revolutionary Islam. That's called 9-11. What sure. is there not to understand? You got to destroy America. Uh, America is the great Christian Satan. And the revolutionaries, which is ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nusra, and other groups, they say the way to destroy America is through terrorism. Simple. Uh, and my wife said it to me in Arabic. There's a, they say it uh, like this, that what was created crooked cannot be straightened out. Hmm. I say the same thing about Islam. What is crooked cannot be straightened out. So the question then is, how do you destroy, destroy Christianity? How do you destroy America, which is the great Christian Satan in the eyes of Islam? Sure. Okay, so that's revolutionary Islam. What most people don't know about is the evolutionary Islam. So I will go now into the evolutionary Islam and then come back to the revolutionary Islam and show how they are working at cross purposes. These are fanatic Muslims against fanatic Muslims because of the approach, the strategy of how to destroy Christianity. Because the evolutionary Muslims, they say, no, 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 no. You cannot destroy America through violence or for terrorism or war. The evolutionary Muslims, who are also fanatic, say the way to destroy America is through incremental buyout. Using Islamic petrodollars to buy out the banks, the corporations, mm -hmm. the politicians, the media, the universities. Um, and, and if I may uh, just cut sure. in here for a moment. They're also uh, financing a number of uh, developments, <clears throat> Islamic uh, organizations, Islamic mosques. I understand that uh, the mosques that are being in America, uh, built in America are financed by the Saudis, among others. So is ISIS and so is Al-Qaeda. All these terrorist groups are financed by different princes uh, in the Saudi kingdom who agree with them. And it's, a, it, it, from their perspective, a very good program. Yes. If you want to extend your reach and your power, you just uh, uh, plot out little uh, population centers and you put a group of people there and then you put another group of people over here and the first thing you know, you've got, you have influence. Correct. 
Now, uh, you know me how many years? Over 20 years we've been doing shows together. Yes. And uh, one of the things that I always emphasize is a, uh, an experience that I had in April of 1991 in Dallas, Texas, called the Dallas Council on World Affairs. And these are economics people. These are the, what you know as, as the CFR, Council on mm -hmm. Foreign Relations. And they said to me, very clearly, I gave them an Israeli Army military lecture. I was an Israeli Army spokesman. And I explained to them what an important role Israel plays, and Israel has to be strong, and Israel has to maintain its borders. And after all of that talk, they said to me, we're not going to let the Jews get in the way of our oil supplies. Now, when they say we're not going to let the Jews get in the way of our oil supplies, it means they're with the Muslims. Yeah. Because the oil supplies at that time in 1991 were coming from the Muslims. Uh, in addition, later, the cash came from the Muslims. And what Americans don't understand is that when George W. Bush uh, left the White House, uh, Wall Street had fallen from 12,000 to 6,000. When President Obama assumed the presidency, it went straight back up to 12,000 in two months. And my contention is that Wall Street was uh, refloated by Saudi and other Islamic cash. That was the deal, that the American leadership would work with the Saudis, would work with the, Islamic, the evolutionary Islamic agenda. So today, what do we see? We see a civil war uh, in Syria. Mm -hmm. We see millions and millions of Muslims fleeing the civil war. So now you have not only oil, not only petrodollars, you know, cash sure. infusion into the American government system, economic system. Now what we're seeing is there are populations being brought over. For example, in Germany, Angela Merkel, the chancellor, said, we need those million Muslims because we German people simply are not reproducing. And, you know, our rep reproduction rate is 1.3, which means the German population is shrinking. You need young blood. So they're bringing Muslims into Germany, into France, into England, into Italy, into other countries. Um, so this is the plan of the evolutionary Muslims, oil, cash, and population. This is not terrorism, or at least the hope is that these people are going to come into the American countries, you know, Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, Canada, the United States, into Europe, and help to float the economies with new blood, with new workers, with money. America, one last thing I want to say before I go over to the, the crazy stuff, <clears throat> one of the great motors of economic development uh, and growth and strength is the building of homes. When you have a, a home, uh, a housing, uh, not a bubble, when you have a housing explosion, yes. when 5, 10, 15, 20 million people immigrate to a country, you've got to build homes for them. When you have a housing boom, building houses for all these people, the whole economy takes off. And so I believe that there are people there, what we call the backroom people, they want prosperity at any cost. And if that means sacrificing Israel, you sacrifice Israel. If you sacrifice Christianity, you sacrifice Christianity because their God is mammon. So I think you'll agree with me that today in Washington, in the big cities, the people who really control are the mammon people. Their God is mammon. Their God is money. And so they go with the evolutionaries. Yeah, but the ISIS people are going to overturn the money changers tables. And what a wonderful way to put it. And I have my Bible open to Psalm 83. Our friend Bill Salas has been uh, writing uh, about this psalm and, and uh, speaking on the subject of the psalm uh, for quite a while now. And it's here we're talking about not money but a, a philosophy or a theology. Uh, psalm 83 two says, For lo thine enemies make a tumult they that hate thee have lifted up the head. If that doesn't describe what's going on today, I don't know what does. They hate Israel. They hate the United States. Verse 3 here in Psalm 83 says, They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, consulted against thy hidden ones. And they have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That's happening right Correct. now. Whatever you say, whatever your philosophy of biblical prophecy happens to be, or the, if that's happening. You know what? Let me add it's another an idea. Another, another idea, another Bible quote, which com completes what you're saying. And it's one of my favorite quotes when I'm speaking in churches. It's Deuteronomy 8. You know, God is saying to the Israelites, they're now about to enter the Holy Land after 40 years sojourn in the desert. 
And God says to them, just remember, the day will come that your flocks will multiply, your gold and silver will multiply, your houses will multiply, and you will raise your arm up against God and say, I did it by the power of my own hand. Wow. Or, as certain presidents have said in the past, hey, is the economy stupid? Yeah. Okay, so those people who say, hey, is the economy stupid, are the people who say, I did it by the power of my own hand. But what does God say in Deuteronomy 8? He says, no, but it is I, the Lord, who gives you the ability and the wherewithal to attain the prosperity. And God can take it away. And how will he take it away? Through ISIS, through the terrorism, through the upheavals that the other side of Islam, the revolutionary Islam, is trying to do. You know, this is a major Bible theme. It runs all the way through Scripture. Uh, Israel, over the years, has been attacked many times. Back in the days of the judges, you know, the Midianites flooding into Israel, and God calls upon Gideon to drive out the Midianites. And why were the Midianites there? Because Israel had lost her faith and allowed this to happen over a period of time. And so this is kind of a recurring pattern that we see. But you hit the nail on the head. It's God who does it. Yes. Not man. Another thing I wanted to share is, you know, I was born in the United States. And I moved to Israel for many reasons when I was 19. But I've been coming back to the States on a regular basis for the last 26 years. And I love the United States more than ever. I love the American people more than ever because when you lose something, then you really appreciate it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I live in the Middle East where democracy is very tenuous. Uh, you come back to America and you see that the American people themselves don't appreciate what they have. Hmm. And the American democracy and Western civilization come out of Judeo-Christian ethics. Yes. And so if the spirit has been, and it's not just the most recent president, I'm talking about going back to the 60s where prayer was taken out of schools in the 60s. Uh, Roe versus Wade about abortion in 1973. I mean, there's been a steady deterioration in the status of God and belief, uh, a religious belief in the United States of America. And so I think God has been very, very patient hmm. and very all-suffering with these rambunctious Americans. Um, and so my, me my message in the Christian churches is revival because I don't want to see America go down. Israel doesn't want to see America go down, but America could go down if you don't have a revival. Yeah, I'm, I'm holding here, I believe it's your third book. Chris. Second book. Is it the second book? I yeah. lose count. Yeah. <laughs> I think you'll have to excuse We've me. We've been working 20 years. Yeah. It's confusing to have so many books. Yeah. Christian revival for Israel's survival. Under the pen name Victor Mordecai. Yeah, and you wrote this a long time ago. Yes, that was 1999. You put your, your, uh, your finger right on the basic idea yeah, right. that... that I think many people today are waking up to that fact. I don't know how many uh, that America has forgotten where Western civilization came from. It came out of the Judeo-Christian uh, theology, philosophy, uh, the whole idea that it is God who favors nations. It's God who, who puts men in power and not man himself. Very correct. And you know, one of the things I say, you know, I have a problem in Israel. In Israel, many people you have to remember, many people don't like Christianity among the Jews in Israel because basically half our population came from the Soviet socialist Eastern Europe. They didn't know what Judeo-Christian Western civilization and democracy was. That's true. Uh, the other half of the population came from Islamic countries. Jews who were kicked out, fled, like my wife, from Islamic countries. Um, so I come here to America, and I know who the, the, what we call the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants are. And when I say white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, that's also the black churches, the Chinese yes. churches, the Latino churches. It's white Anglo-Saxon Protestant dogma and ideology. America never killed one Jew. And that's why America is world power number one. I sincerely believe this. And as long as America blesses Israel, it will be blessed. And it's interesting that the Republican, I, I know this is going to be after the, who knows after the elections what it will be, but the Republican candidates are very, very pro-Israel. Uh, Hillary Clinton tries to be pro-Israel too. Everybody's trying to be pro-Israel before the elections. Sure. But you have to follow the money trail. Whoever becomes the President of the United States has to do what he's told by the agenda, and the agenda is controlled by the Islamic oil, Islamic petro, uh, petrodollars, and now the population numbers that are coming into the country. So the idea was these people would come in, they'd assimilate, 
they would be part of the industry, part of the, and you know, wherever I go, I see Muslims in many aspects of American uh, uh, commercial life, and they are integrating in certain ways, uh, but they hate the Jews. Islam is a system that hates the Jews and the Christians. And they say, kill the Jew on Saturday, kill the Christian on Sunday. So if the leadership in Washington, Democrat or Republican, says, well, we go with the money, we go with the mammon, we want, Amer we want to make America great again. You got to go with the Muslim money. And so what happens is if they go against Israel, then God's going to send the ISIS people from Brussels. And that explains uh, why we are loath to speak of terrorism as Islamic terrorism. Right. We call it just terrorism. But it's the only game in town. And it's, it's the money market yeah. that, that causes uh, these little distinctions to be made the way they're made. You have to remember, and I don't want to mention names of, uh, of TV stations, but all TV stations which are traded on Wall Street at one time or another are bought out by the Muslim petrodollar. Hmm. Then they fire all of the news editors who are anti-Islamic or pro-Israel. That's why the media uh, is anti-Israel. And it's a big lie that the Jews control the media. Jews don't control anything. The media is controlled by advertising funds. And if the advertising funds come from the banks, corporations, or, or directly from the Islamic powers, the media has to be anti-Israel. I have to say you're right, but, all, but in, in my opinion, the Jews have had an enormous, enormous contribution uh, to make, uh, to bring Western civilization to its greatness. Correct. All the artists, the scientists, the intellectuals, Jewish. And, and because they, uh, well, what can I say? They've been blessed. You've been blessed. Correct. But more than that, there is a, a kind of a traditional way of, of, of looking at things, of, of approaching life. Uh, and, and no matter how vague it may seem, that approach includes God. Correct. Today, that, that approach is being rapidly left behind. Right. Well, I, you know, I'll say something now which is a really long stretch. You know, when, when Jesus teaches, love the enemy, okay? And again, I don't want to mention political parties, but the one you're not thinking of is the one which says love the enemy and uh, overlook the horrible things that that enemy is really doing. And so even those people are Christians, even though they're anti-Christian and anti-God, but uh, the, the Judeo-Christian ethic is to welcome all immigrants, all refugees, and to love them regardless of their faith, even though their faith is endemically anti-Christian, anti-Jewish, anti-Israel. Hmm. And, and Israel is a, a living example of that today, the nation Israel. Let's go back, and uh, I want to go through the books that you've written, uh, and let's just start with this one, Is Fanatic Islam a Global Threat? And, and by the way, when was this published? It was published in five editions from 1995 to 1997, and it predicted 9-11 and quite a few other things, too. And a question on the cover, is Fanatic Islam a global threat? Well, I think everybody now would answer yes. It's the bestseller of all my books. And, but, but when this book came out... Everyone attacked me. Yeah. <laughs> not everybody answered yes. Yeah. Uh, Islamic Threat Updates, uh, Almanac Number 1, 5762, The Hebrew Year... Now, this uh, talks about... Again. Plans of Islam after 9-11 to destroy the United States. And also, very important, if I may add one point here, the Saudis, as of 2003, we're talking about over 13 years ago, in 2003 they already had 120 Chinese long-range missiles and nuclear warheads courtesy of Pakistan and Abdul Qadir Khan. So Saudi Arabia is already a nuclear weaponry power. Christian revival for Israel's survival. And uh, again, Christian revival. Why would you be writing about that? Because the Jews are uh, decreasing in numbers in the United States and the Muslims are increasing. According to my calculation, there are 6 million Jews and 30 million Muslims in the United States and nobody wants to admit it. And I explain their system, how they do it. And this one goes to the Judeo-Christian movement in Israel. It's the Bible Block Party. Bible Block Party. Right, which will be registered, God willing, April 21st. And Islam prophesied in Genesis. Genesis. Wow. And this is a, a, truly a book on prophecy. Yes. Uh, you take a, a, a different angle, a different tack than most people do. Right. And what I say there is that Allah is not the same as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, holy to the Jews and Christians. 
their god is Allah al-Ilahi, which is the moon god, the war god, the sword god, and the Muslims call their god al-Makr, which means Allah is the greatest of all the liars and deceivers. Mm. So if you're a Christian, that's Satan. Their god is Satan. And, and I say Islam is a criminal psychosis, not a religion. Return to Mecca. <clears throat> an interesting book, an interesting book, Return to Mecca. What's it about in two sentences? This is basically about the exodus from Egypt. Uh, the rabbis do not know, or pr pr you know, they profess that they don't know where the 40 years in the desert was. It was in Arabia, the Arabian Peninsula, Mecca and Medina. And uh, Mount Sinai is really in northwest Saudi Arabia. So I talk about that there in the book. And that evokes memories of our recent conversations with Jim and Penny uh, Caldwell. I love them. They are great. Yeah. And finally, we, we come to Islamic rivalry, ISIS and Iran, a book I mentioned a minute ago. This is the update where we are now with ISIS. It's very important people read it. And the reason I wanted to go through those books is simply to show that that you don't come to this party lately. Right. You've been doing this for a long time. 26 years. And and you have a, a, a real grasp of not only what's happened and what's happening, but, but what will be happening in the near future. Correct. Uh, I think you've been very correct so far. Uh, and that's why uh, at this point in time, I want to move into the, the whole I idea of ISIS. Where did ISIS come from? Where's ISIS going right now? Uh, from the Israeli perspective. Okay, well, firstly, if you remember Saddam Hussein, Saddam Hussein represented 20% of the population of Iraq, the Sunni Arabs. 60%, which is Shiite, was totally disenfranchised. 20%, which is Sunni, but Kurdish, which is a Turkic group, it's not Arabs, disenfranchised. And both groups were totally persecuted. So 80% of the population uh, Shiites and Kurds were suppressed by Saddam Hussein. So when Saddam Hussein was finally overthrown in 2003, the American approach was democracy, majority rule. Uh -huh. Who's the majority? The Shiites. Yeah. So all of a sudden the Shiites came to power and Saddam Hussein and his, his he was executed, but his people were all kicked out of the military. So ISIS basically is a mobilization of Iraqi Republican guards who were without a job brought into this new group of terrorists who are funded by Saudi Arabia and, and Turkey and other mobilization, countries. Mobilization, that's a good word. Yeah. <clears throat> and by the way, they, they got their weapons courtesy of the good old USA. Which is subservient to the Saudi regime because America is subservient to the mammon of the Saudi regime to keep the American economy afloat. Wow. It, that makes you very sad to think about this. In other words, it would have been possible to forestall this whole thing. There are a number of things that I discuss uh, in this book, Islamic Rivalry. I call them a, a American policy uh, fallacies. That America thought if it did this, it would be the right thing. It was wrong. Then it did that, it was wrong. And the Arabs, I'm not praising the Arabs in any means, but if you, I, I talk to the Arabs. They say, America, everything it touches gets destroyed in the Middle East. So the Arabs don't really trust the U.S. in any way. They hate the U.S. because the U.S. is a... Uh, is the Christian uh, 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 Satan. They call America the Christian Satan. I call them the Satan. They call Christian America the Satan. And uh, so I'm totally dedicated to saving Western civilization, democracy, of the United States, of Canada, of Europe. Uh, Western civilization, women's rights, ab abolition of slavery, uh, all the good things that our civilization has come to after these last 2,000 years. You know, we, uh, we teach uh, from the uh, dispensational prophetic viewpoint here at Prophecy Watchers. Uh, we, we believe that uh, from the time of our Lord to the present, uh, the world has gone through several changes uh, mm -hmm. that basically are predicted in Bible prophecy. And of course the big one is Israel's return to the land starting 1897, 1947, 48, Israel's wars, you know, in the 50s, in 1967, 1973, all of that we believe is prophesied in Scripture. Right. And we operate on that basis that we're actually seeing prophecy fulfilled right before our very eyes. And we, we as Christians uh, look for the blessed hope, for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, for His church. And I've talked with, uh, you've talked with so many Christians, you understand all of this. I think better maybe than most Christians do. And you understand our perspective. But I have to say, 
that Israel is coming to the forefront in all this. And from, from my perspective as a teacher of the Bible, Israel is rising. The prospects of Israel are rising as we speak. Benjamin Netanyahu, I often refer to him as the quietest man on planet Earth. He's in a position <clears throat> where he could say a great deal right now, but he doesn't say much. But I get the feeling that behind the scenes he's very, very powerful, and he's taking uh, a number of actions that are not so, so visible to us here. What's Israel doing right now? If you remember in the book of Exodus, God says to the Israelites, you know, we have battle. We, first, we have to flee from the Egyptian army. Then we get into the desert. It's out of the pan, into the fire. Then we're attacked by Amalek. Yes. And then we're attacked by the Midianites. Uh, we're attacked and attacked and attacked. And there are parts there where God says, you stay still. You stay silent. I will fight for you. And throughout the Bible, we see instances of tremendous miracles and indeed that God fights for Israel. So what we have seen now, and I've said this before, uh, when I was an Israeli army spokesman in the 1990s, we were told that in spite of the peace with Egypt, which I always supported, and the peace with Jordan, which I supported, and the discussions, uh, the Oslo negotiations with the Palestinians, which are still sort of like hobbling along, we had one enemy. That enemy was Syria. And God, look at Syria today. There is no Syria. Syria has been smashed to smithereens, not by Netanyahu, not by Israel, by God. Look at Iraq. There is no more Iraq. God took care of Iraq too. And I predict God is going to take care of Egypt. Uh, Bill Salas is talking about Elam or Iran. He's 100% correct. Uh, Turkey is going to be uh, broken up into smithereens too. It's not Israel that's doing it. It's God that's doing it. I mean, if we're talking about prophecy, Regarding Netanyahu, I've always said Netanyahu is the right man in the right place at the right time. I support him 100%. And God willing, when my Judeo-Christian political party gets uh, into the Knesset, we will support Netanyahu. And before we leave today, I want to mention the seven books by Avi Lipkin. I'm holding them here, and we're offering them in our online bookstore as the Avi Lipkin package, yours for $79.95. Just go to prophecywatchers.com, the online bookstore, click and scroll down, and you'll find Avi's books. By the way, I want to mention, too, uh, that we are going to uh, be live streaming in our July 15th through 17th, 2016 Rocky Mountain International Prophecy Conference, as mentioned uh, in our magazine right here on page 13. This magazine will come to you absolutely free with every order from Prophecy Watchers. Check out the, the live streaming possibilities. For $79.95, you can see all the presentations in both auditoriums. It's a wonderful opportunity for you. Avi Lipkin, it's been a pleasure. Always great to be with you. May the Lord be with you. Amen, and God save America. Amen. And keep watching, everybody. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.